Jan Doyle, and this is Wise Talk. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. Today's guest is talented, creative, artistic. Her name is Regina Thomas. Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks, Jan. I'm so happy to have you here. Now, Regina, I understand you're a collage mixed media artist. Yes. What does that exactly mean? Well, collage has anything to do with tearing paper and applying it to a support, a canvas or whatever. Mm -hmm. And mixed media is just what it says. It's mixing different mediums. It could be different types of paint, acrylic, gouache, watercolor, inks, uh, graphite, charcoal. Uh, it's, and, and mediums. We also, in today's day and age, have a lot of gel mediums that companies make for acrylic that could give them texture and other different types of looks, which I'll talk about with you later. Yeah, I just had a quick question that came to my mind. Would you ever consider mixing photographs and thread as mixed media or Well, that's, yeah, a lot of people with digital photography today, they incorporate it into fine art uh, as transfers or doing that or uh, using textiles and threads. So yes, absolutely. So the, defi the definition is, it seems to be enlarging or broadening. Itself. It is, because there's so many things, creative things available to artists today that weren't before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And I know you like to get those and, and buy oh, them. Oh, I'm and playing try with them everything. I'm always pushing the envelope and trying to teach myself something new. Which I have to say, I was really impressed with when I met you and then you said that. Now, when you start a piece, you're, you look at a blank white canvas. Mm -hmm. Now what? That's the hardest part, I think, for most of the people I know that are in the art field. It's kind of intimidating. You see this white thing, and you're supposed to come up with something creative. So for myself, I usually just throw some paint on the canvas. Uh, by throwing, I do mean literally splashing in one or taking gloves and smooshing it around or just using brushes and palette knives and uh, do that. But before you start that process with the actual goodies, the, the mediums, uh, primer is important. Mm -hmm. I, I urge that even today when you can buy canvases that are pre-primed by the factories, they're white, that's, comp that's gesso, which is a chalky white substance. And just like when you paint a house, you have to prime the walls first so that the paint doesn't suck it all up. Mm -hmm. It's the same way with us, and it also makes the uh, canvas easier to work on. So I urge you to gesso it and then start throwing some stuff on it. Now, some people like to um, think about it ahead of time. I don't. I am pretty much just going with the flow and seeing what comes up, and eventually something comes out. Almost sounds like it is difficult to be like you go to. I saw your studio, mm -hmm. I have studio envy, I might add. And you go down and you look at your canvas and and you just create from that blank slate, and that sounds yeah, difficult. I very, to me. I very rarely have anything in mind. Uh, there's a thing that you used to do as children where you would doodle, yes, and yes. you'd make all these different doodle things, and then you're supposed to find something in that doodle. It could be a bird, a snake, a tree. And that's kind of what I do with the gesso. I apply it thickly and leave it very textural most of the time. And somehow I'll keep studying that and then uh, putting the paint on and I'll start to see things. Oh, that's, that's a very interesting process. Mm -hmm. Now, th we're going to start looking at some of your work and then going into specifics. But the first piece is called Watcher in the Woods. Right. And I understand that's behind you. Yes. So can you explain to me a little bit about this piece, your inspiration? I have some favorite icons uh, that I like to put in my art. Trees are my absolute favorite. I just love trees, and I study them all the time. I find them almost more beautiful bare because the barks are so interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this piece, again, I had just uh, primed the, the canvas and started working and created this series of trees. And as I was doing it and looking, making it very textural and trying to uh, make the bark more interesting, I started to have some fun with it and left some areas where it almost looks like a face or an eye looking at you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't know how many people go for walks in the woods, but sometimes it can be a little interesting where you feel as if you are being watched. So well, I think a lot of trees have faces in them. And I'm looking mm -hmm. and, I, and I remember when I saw this in your house, I 
did pick out an eye. Mm -hmm. But I like looking at trees in nature and picking out different parts of the body in a tree. Mm -hmm. They're fascinating. Yeah, trees are just beautiful to me. There's nothing like it. It's our anchor between heaven and earth. So What a lovely saying. Well, it's true. <laughs> what? <So. laughs> now, do you work from a photograph or no? No, no, no. No, <coughs> now, as I say, I just apply mediums and I keep layering and texturing. This is many, many layers uh, to achieve this. <coughs> and uh, one of the mediums that I like to use in the trees, not everywhere, but some places, if you can see this closely, is crackle paste, which I'll talk about later. He's doing a close-up now. Yeah, and crackle paste is does just that. It causes like cracks. Pen, maybe that looks yeah, it causes cracks in the, the bark which you see when you look at real trees. Mm -hmm. Now, none of my work is supposed to be realistic, but it is, it represents a tree. Well, when you look back, at it. He'll go back to a detail and. Now, if you look over here. Okay, know, good, good. This one area, I don't know if I'm covering You're it You're doing up. a fine job. This one area here, if you look very closely, looks like there's someone in that bark <laughs> looking at you. I see that. And that's what I like is when uh, people look at my work from a distance, they like it. But then they keep getting in closer and they all say, most of my uh, people who come to my shows say they always find interesting things in it. And that makes me happy. <laughs> now, yeah, now that, that was very good. Now, I just want to speak a minute. So you have shows and you exhibit at a gallery. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, I started out in Boston area, and uh, then when I moved here to New Haven, I started to join different uh, organizations like New Haven Paint and Clay is one, a Creative Arts Workshop. There's a whole series, and I'm right now being represented uh, in Centerbrook near Essex at Spectrum Gallery. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I do work whenever she has different exhibitions. The one coming up, I think it's going to be in February and March, at the end of February and March, is black and white. So mm -hmm. right now I'm having fun challenging myself doing some just black and white work. Well, I've been to that gallery, and it's a, it's a wonderful gallery in Essex. Yeah, it is. It's a beautiful space. Now, I also understand you give workshops there. Workshops and classes. So, and that kind of moves us right into the, your sample boards. Tell me a little about your sample uh, boards and what you do with the workshops and classes. Well, I try on well, my classes that I do for five weeks. I start my students out with uh, learning things about painting or collage. Usually collage first, which is using papers. You'll notice a lot of papers in my work. And we'll be talking more and about And we'll talk this. that. But then also learning what the mediums, there's so many mediums mm -hmm. that you can use. And these are from Goldens. So well, this is what I do. I make uh, sampler boards for them. And this is Liquitex. I like both companies. I don't get any money. I'm not promoting them. <laughs> but I do recommend them. And you can see that, uh, I don't know how closely you can look, but different, uh, let's see, this one says uh, modeling paste. And if you go to a store, you'll see samples too showing it. But I, once, once my students after a few five week sessions want to learn more about working with the painting mediums, then I want them to learn about all the gel mediums because they always say, well, how did you do that? And how did you do that? Well, this is how. It's, it's not magic. It's actual gel products that change the look of the paint. Now, this, this is very interesting because what you have here is, I see, self-leveling uh, self 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 -le gel. gel. And you have samples of it. And as a, someone who doesn't have any background information uh -huh. on this, I could go back to my sample board and say, oh, that's right. This right. is what we talked about in class. Right. And actually, I even find the canvas interesting. This is These are very, you can buy uh, these at uh, a place like Michael's or uh, any art supply mm -hmm. store. You can get them in packs of five. And they're just canvas, but they're panels. Now, so I, they're hard to work on, but I mean hard in touch. It's as I look at this one, um, the gels, I'm noticing on there are some things with, um, you have like sparkles in them, and this one has sparkles inside it, and this one is like a chalk paste 
that you you, you I'd talk have to see it. I really to... can't turn it towards you oh, because okay. I not because I don't like you, but I because I want the monitor. I that. think you want, I think you're making it harder on me. I, no, um, and this one has um, what does it say? It is. Uh, it says it's clear granular gel. Oh right, yes. So that's uh, also known as glass bead gel, and it looks like little shiny glass beads. Okay, I see that. Right. I'm, this is the one we're looking at. Right. Demo, okay. And this, I can see that in here. So when you send your students home mm -hmm. and they have a sample board, mm -hmm. this becomes an invaluable learning tool. It is, and I want them. I always give them uh, printouts and have them do something like this, so they'll remember when they're on their own and they want to. Because it's expensive, so mm -hmm. you, they want to. If you're going to purchase something, make sure you really use use it. This one is a coarse pumice. Mm -hmm. That's like a sand, as you can see. These are those granular gels, or I think I have this product is um, Liquitex, and this is the same idea. The glass bead, it's just a little different. Mm -hmm. Each company makes it differently. Let's see if I can find. It's hard to tell because it's white, but this and is crackle paste, which I used in the trees, and you can see the cracks in the uh, panel. Mm -hmm. That's not showing up as well as it does in person, but mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Now, right behind me, mm -hmm. using what you have the aquarium. What is this? Aquarius is a piece. I'm just going to take this sure. out for the. Mm -hmm. um, Aquarius really shows you how you can make different things with the, the gel medium. So in this, I have it's an abstract to try to um, kind of express what the ocean is. Mm -hmm. So I have Asian papers, specialty papers, that I painted over. Now, to Asian papers? Mm -hmm. Like rice papers. But and where did you get those? Well, I, some of them I used to live in Singapore for several years. Or you can go to art supply stores today, or online, of course, and you can order different varieties. Okay, I'd just the, like to recap. You've lived in England. Mm -hmm. You've lived in Asia. Yes. And you, I'm just saying, and now you're in the United States. Right. You've gotten around. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you've just gotten around. That, <laughs> are you bit. that kind of woman? All right, so go yes, ahead. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right, just saying. But this is paper. As you see, it's start, it divided into three parts. So this is a gel medium you can use this to that's supposed like. to look like mother of pearl or oysters and gives that very textural look. And then down here, I have a, a very a variety of glass bead gel in it to make the water s look more sparkly. It's maybe hard to see on camera. And uh, I also use, um, oh, what is it called? It's, uh, it's like a glitter, but it's in, I don't have a sample of it, that you can buy these little paints that have broken up uh, chips that glow. Hmm. So this is a very textural piece. I don't know how well you can tell, but this oh, he is has paper. A nice, he has a nice shot in there. Yeah, I'm and then at, yeah. this part, and then this part. And it's all using all of those medium gels, as well as the collage, using the paper, but I changed it to make it my own. So how does this, how long does something like this take to dry? Oh, well, again, this is several layers. Uh, so when I'm working, I'm usually working on at least three pieces at a time because oh. I want to give it time to dry, and then I go back in. So uh, this piece probably only took, be, uh, because the composition is fairly simple and abstract, probably by the time it was finished, maybe in three days. Well, I have to say, that's, oh, that's something that I'm not sure I would be able to you handle you have three separate projects, distinct mm -hmm. projects going at one time. Right. How do you keep everything straight? I don't know. I just look at the canvas and know what I'm doing. And I, 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 I don't plan anything, so that's the beauty of my work. I just keep adding to it and looking. And whenever I finish a piece, I will keep it hung in my studio against a wall and look at it for several days or a couple of weeks because sometimes something isn't right and I can't figure out what I need to do. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand what you mean by that because mm -hmm. I have a design wall because I do something totally different from you, mm -hmm. but I, I do need to just look at it. Right. And, you, and, and through the process of looking, right. it talks to me. 
I don't know, do your, does your work talk to yes, you? Yes, and some days it doesn't talk to me and I have to walk away. That's why I do more than one project at a time. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. And uh, whatnot. So, because sometimes you can keep working on one piece, you get frustrated and you can ruin it. Uh, so, it's nice to be able to hang it up and keep looking at it and thinking. I can't tell you how many times I get them photographed. And I use my husband, who's a professional fine art photographer. Yes, he is. He's not bad. I've seen his work. Yeah, He's pretty good. Yeah, so he photographs my work. And then a couple of weeks later, I'll say, oh, I need to have more work. I have to have more photographs done because I changed it. Does he make you make him cookies or something to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does he work you out of it? Um, let me, I just was wondering when, um, one thing that sort of resonated with me mm -hmm when we were doing our pre-interview in your studio is that you always like to try the new products. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. why is that? Why, why isn't it like, well, I know how to do it, I'm just gonna stick with what I know. Mm -hmm. Why new products? Well, I think everybody's different. And I started art late in life, and a lot of my work has been self-taught. Uh, I started with some workshops with some artists to kind of get a, a leg up, but, uh, it's just interesting to me. I get bored very easily. Mm -hmm. And so I do that. And I also teach. So I can't teach to my students if I haven't myself worked with the materials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, so, did you have an art background in college? No, I did not. You didn't? No, my mother-in-law was a professional artist from um, Newtown Square in Pennsylvania. And she introduced me to galleries and museums, and then she bought me my first set of oils, and I was barely 21. But then eventually my husband started doing international, and I put the paints away because I had to watch children, and I couldn't do both. Right, right. And I didn't pick it up again until, as I said to you, I was, I, I've always loved art and appreciated art. Um, my daughter picked that up. She went to RISD. She graduated there in a fine arts degree. But I myself, uh, had to wait until later in life, which was kind of nice. Maybe I appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. And I'm not as nervous. But when you get older, you're not as nervous about what other people think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes and it makes, I am. Well, no, and it makes me happy. And when I get positive responses, because that's what I want my art to do. I don't want to shock anyone or upset anyone. I just want them to get a good feeling and to want to get intimate with the piece. Mm -hmm. Well, that's probably why you're in galleries and, and you, mm -hmm. do, you do very well at the, the shows. Yeah, yeah. And you made a comment that you see it from a distance, but then you like people to come closer and find other things in it. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I, I understand you have, this is in front of me, it's called Cityscapes? Cityscapes, Now, yeah. you have a class on this. and our I did have a five-week class on that. I'm where, where do you teach your classes? At Spectrum Gallery in Centerbrook okay. uh, near Essex. And... This is on 300-pound archival arches paper. That's, that's a thick it's paper. It's very heavy. And I did that because when I, I always do a sample of what I'm going to teach. And I wanted to teach them how to make painted and, and gel-plated papers and then to cut shapes, basic rectangles, squares, circles, triangles, and create their own cityscape. I don't have them do what I do, but I leave that at the class so they can borrow from it or get ideas for it. But and you're not interested in having them uh, mimic it exactly? No, because I don't. I think that's kind of limiting to the students. And some of them uh, have, I've had students who are professional artists and just want to learn something new to maybe add to their work. And then I have people who really don't know much about art at all. And I want them to have fun with it and go home with something that they can feel proud of. <coughs> that's, that's a good thought. That really yeah, is. Yeah. Now we're on a new series, a five-week series, and, and I get a lot of return students. Mm -hmm. And we're doing tearing papers and creating painted paper collages. And I'm letting them pick out their own uh, composition. I've showed them because not at all of them can draw how to do a carbon paper on top of a already painted surface. Mm -hmm. And uh, some are doing birds, some are doing trees, horses, cows, still life, whatever they want to do, and they're going to tear the papers, not cut it, but tear the papers this time and go with the curvature of their work. And we'll see how that goes. 
Well, I think that's fantastic. After talking with you, I just want to take one of your classes because I thought, <laughs> not that I ever expect to grow up and be just like you, but I just like the idea mm -hmm. and, and the playful part of it. And, I want them to have fun. Yeah, and understanding I know nothing about it. And mm -hmm. I think because knowing you and knowing I know nothing about it, it's okay because you said something to me where you take every student where they are, mm -hmm. you know, and you walk around and you take every student and you help them move forward. And I thought, well, I don't care if I make a mess. You know, I don't know anything anyway. No. And I so, always say to them, it's only a piece of paper or a canvas and we can throw a gesso over it and it just makes the work more, more textural. That's, that was my thought. It's a win-win. Yeah. <laughs> now, there's a word I'm not going to even try to say because I know I'm not going to do it well. Oh, the title of this piece? And I can't say it, so what is right. that? Shinasere. I dare you to say Shinasere. <laughs> I dare you to say it, look it up, and say it all by yourself. Shinasere. Okay. Shinasere. Now, that's this piece over here. This piece, again, was done um, on 300-pound paper and mounted on a frame by a very well-known uh, framer here in this area, uh, Dwight Peterson and he would do a lot of my bigger pieces and knows how to really show them off. I thought, I always thought it was your husband who did this. No, no, he's done some basic framing for me, but when I have bigger pieces that I want to have in a show, uh, Dwight was the person, the go-to person. A lot of the artists in New Haven use him. Oh, all this time I oh. thought this was, you married a talented man, mm -hmm. and I was extremely jealous. I'm not as jealous anymore. No, he see? Does, oh, because I, I noticed the framing, and I loved the framing. Yeah, he does wonderful work, and uh, he always makes my work. I, presentation is everything. It is. And uh, he does a beautiful job, and it's probably hard to tell here, but I, I am known for my very uneven, raggy edges. Mm -hmm. I like to go over the paper, and so he, that really highlights it. It's a floating mat and I'm not sure what he uses to pull it out a little bit from the surface of it but this is all Asian because I did live in Singapore and you can get these papers today here but also when my husband would go to Asia to different countries he would bring back vintage uh, papers use the, from use the China pen. from China and whatnot so I did that and then I have a thing when I go on vacation, my husband makes my girlfriend and I sit in the back seat and uh, we either read books or I sketch. So I just have a little books I buy usually at Barnes & Noble that are these beautiful uh, leather books with the mulberry paper, yes, which is yes, Asian. Yes. Yes. And so I take pencil and do pencil sketches. And of course, it's always nature, leaves and whatnot and bring them back when I come home after a trip and every once in a while pull them out and embellish them, paint them a little bit more, add some ink. And so I thought they'd be pretty in this particular piece. Very, very interesting. So you can see interesting. different leaves. Very interesting. In the piece. And the thought that I had, because I know when you travel, you when you try to bring back gifts, it's difficult because you you're cons you're constrained by size and weight. Mm -hmm. But to bring back paper, mm -hmm. he can find that, oh, it's so and amazing. it's easy to bring it back. And he brings back paper, and he's good for gold by, yes, for is. the next he couple of months. Yes, he makes me happy, girl. Yes, he, cheap way to go. You it know? is. Some girls want jewels. I want paper. Wow, <laughs> did he pick a right woman? Because this is very very pretty. Oh, it's thank very you. very pretty, and it's thank you. it's interesting to look at. And I I liked hearing about how that you used your sketching to mm -hmm. all, and you and integrated some of my own work. That's not my uh, forte necessarily. But as I say, I don't do anything to be photographic uh, in realistic in any way, shape, or form. So it's kind of how I see things. And we only have a few minutes left. I just wanted to get to that other piece oh, no. uh, behind you. Another one of my favorite icons are uh, dwellings, naive dwellings. And there's the tree. And I also have the birds, especially ravens. I think there's something special about the raven. And, that reminds uh, me of Edgar Allan Poe. That, well, yes, if you want to go dark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to go dark. Okay. But I integrate, this is called Kindred Spirits, mm -hmm. and it was a two-part series. And I don't really show these. I've so far kept them at home. Uh, and uh, 
but they're some of my favorite work and I just have fun making these simplistic dwellings and I this time I put the tree the bird the whole nine yards and I use old vintage papers materials uh, the foil you see in there I think that was gum wrapper foil Really? Yeah, I'm like a bag lady. When Bob goes to New York, he's a photographer. We'll go early in the morning, and he'll be trying to photograph, and I'll be in the back with my raincoat with the big pockets, picking up papers and trash from the streets. <laughs> and he gets so upset. I said, uh, you forget what I do. Yeah, you forget it. I mean, really. Yeah. You, you should know. Now, you just told me you've been married 50 years, and I'm yeah. thinking, you know, he's not going to go leave you now after 50 years. Yeah. Well, you know? one never knows. You know? well, 50 years. But I, I remember when I was at your home, you told me to look in your living room, uh, dining room area and said, take anything you want off the wall and bring, mm -hmm. we'll bring to the show. And so these are some of the things that yes, I picked. Yes, these are some of the things that I, I really don't show in galleries and whatnot. Yes. I will eventually, but they look right, really nice right now. In my, I have a home that's only three years old and yes, yes. I kind of hate to part with some of them. But. And they're beautiful in the home. Oh, thank now, you. Now, I, I, my director is going to tell me again how much time we have left because I did forget. But um, I really quickly want to see that yeah. piece over there. Well, this caustic art? What this is, is encaustic. The oldest art form is using melted wax and uh, pigment. And, Hold it up to the camera. And I am, is this the right camera? Yes, that is. And I am learning, teaching myself. I've taken a couple of uh, weekend courses uh, with some well-known uh, encaustic artists so that I could learn how to safely do it. But it's melting wax and adding pigment. And I also and have you know, old papers underneath so I, you can I'm, kind of see We're going see to have it. to have this uh, maybe another show when, sure. and talk more about it. I just wanted to make sure the audience saw I'm that. I'm still learning these, and I have probably about eight pieces I'm working on. Maybe right that could be even be a show in itself. <laughs> Let me ask <laughs> you work. this. Do you have a website? <laughs> yes, I do. What is your website? It's Regina, R-E-G-I-N-A, M as in Marie, Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S, at Comcast.net. I just realized we have the same middle name. My middle name is Marie. Oh, yeah? We're sisters, and I we know. didn't know that. So, um, and if people wanted to contact you, that would be the way to do it is through your website. Right. Regina M. Thomas. M and they can look up and find out more about you and where you're oh, showing. Oh, wait a minute. Comcast.net. That's my email. Okay. So dot com. Dot com. I do this all the time. Either way, you can get hold of me. And if you should forget <laughs> that and you want to contact her, and you can always contact me, Jan Doyle at BCTV, or you can contact me through jmdteach at comcast.net. And either way, we'll get in touch with her. But um, this was really extremely interesting. Oh, thank and you. to bring, to know how you developed as an artist, it all started with your mother in law. So, yeah. mother in laws are not all bad. That's kind oh, of good. Oh, I to know. loved her dearly. You know, and, she was quite talented. And, and, and she brought you, we owe it all to her. And, mm. But we really owe it to your husband because. You met her through your husband. Absolutely. So he's at the root of your creative genius. Oh, sure. Give him the credit. <laughs> it always ends up. Give Bob the credit. <laughs> but your work is wonderful, um, and I hope I get to take one of your classes in the upcoming year. Oh, that would year. be great. That would Thank be great. Thank you so much Thank for being you, on Jan. the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you.